Hello, and welcome to the Healing Streams Reflections. The title for this day's post is Adoration or Praising the Living God. Psalm 93 verses 1 to 2 declares, The Lord reigns, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has gathered himself with strength. Surely, the world is established so that it cannot be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. Adoring or praising God honors or glorify God for who He is. As we read from Psalm 93, verses 1 to 2, and also Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, as well as Jeremiah chapter 32, 70 to 20, attest to this. How will you describe God? Many misguided believers see him as a grandfatherly figure up in the heaven who is waiting to meet our needs. We often forget the majesty of God. He is holy, righteous, and worthy of our praise. The book of Revelation provides us with an even greater picture of God. As John recorded what was revealed to him, he described a God who is not human. He saw God's radiance as well as his redemptive love for mankind. Therefore, in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, John sees four living creatures whose job is to continually declare holy 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 is the lord god the almighty who was and who is and who is to come their only responsibility is to offer unceasing praise to god why did god allow john to see those things it is safe to assume that god wanted to impress upon his mind an image of himself, the beloved God who is transcendent, above and beyond anything on earth. There is nothing in the universe that can alter the person or the position of the Godhead. And at the same time, this mighty God whom we serve allowed his Son to enter the sin-ridden world to pay the penalty of our transgressions. Our holy and majestic God is the same God who reached down and saved you and I from eternal death. Can you see God's glory? He is not worthy. Is he, is he not worthy of your continuous adoration and praise? Beloved, honor him by reflecting upon his words he has great and wonderful things to say to you expressing our appreciation for who god is there will be times when your heart will overflow with joy songs and tears will well up in your eyes glorifying god for who he is this involves giving all the attributes of god this intimate adoration can only be expressed from your heart or perhaps in the heavenly language. You are conveying the deep love you have for your Father. As Psalm 29 verse 2 declares, Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. True praise. We express our admiration for God and His greatness in words. You begin to celebrate what God has done 
an appreciation of his wonders, great accomplishment. We praise God because of who he is. Psalm numbered 47, 6 to 7. And what he does. Psalm 103, 1 to 5. As your life becomes a reflection of him, you will praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Psalm 150 verse 2. The Bible says everything that has breath praises God and those who seek God as well. Psalm 150 verse 6 and Psalm number 22 verse 26. They praise God at all times. Psalm 34 verse 1 on in every circumstances. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 16 to 18. A distinguishing feature of praise in the Bible is that it is for most of the time expressed through music and singing as second chronicles chapter 5 13 exodus 15 20 to 21 second chronicles chapter 20 27 28 though others just express it without any singing or musical accomplishment as first chronicles chapter 16 verse 8 to 36 explains to us praise is god's prescription for changing our environment. Praise is your access, your key into the presence of God. All people are seeking God. Praise is the dwelling place of God. When we praise God, we don't have to look for Him because He comes to us. It is a conscious choice, an act of our will, a sacrifice of praise. It is the praise we give to God from obedience, despite how we feel. It is giving God all that he is due and giving him room in our life to do all he wants to do. Praise comes from our relationship with God. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21 tells us that as believers we are created to praise God. And Hebrew chapter 13 verse 15 encourages us to continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. Praise should be a natural expression of our love for our Heavenly Father. It should flow like a fountain out of His indwelling presence and should not have to be pumped up by our own efforts. At times, it becomes difficult to understand how some even praise leaders shout on the members to clap their hands. Meanwhile, we know that it is a fountain that comes from within you, the indwelling presence of God within you, which energizes the whole atmosphere with its anointing so that people join in the chorus and celebrate Him to the glory of His holiness. Praise should also be offered to God in many ways, in public and in private, in words, and in song, our praise to God is most effective when it comes from a pure heart, one that is free from bitterness and therefore open to give honor to our Heavenly Father. Indeed, we were made for praise. According to C.S. Lewis, I was not born to be free. I was born to adore and obey. If true praise is the overflow of the human heart, why is it that we do not praise God more often? Perhaps it is because we are unprepared. Take, for example, the story of Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman, as described in John chapter 4, verse 21 to 26. Jesus discusses religious observance with this woman midway. Through their conversation, he declares, But an hour is coming, and now is. When the true worshippers of when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for such people the Father seeks to be his worshippers. John 4 23. Do you see the implication here? We often hear much about people looking for God, but here we see that God is actually looking for us. Specifically, he's looking for those who worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, God does not want simply church of attendance. 
people who attend church know God does not simply God does not want simply church attenders. He is looking for church worshippers, people who worship, adore, and praise him in the beauty of his holiness. This woman was simply conducting her daily routine tours when she was unexpectedly approached by Christ the Messiah. We can only imagine her surprise when Jesus confirmed his identity. We can learn something about praise from this example. In order to rejoice at the truth, we must be prepared to receive it. Are you ready to receive it? Are you offended whenever the truth is being made to known through preaching and teaching of the word of God? Are you offended at the preacher? Then how can you praise God? First, we must know the truth. Primary reason for our lack of praise is ignorance of God's word and how to apply his principles. When we realize their truth and validity, we will naturally be filled with praise. Truth means that real praise is not just an emotional high. Unless worship is based on the truth of God's word, then all we have is a sentimental feeling that we find suiting. An example and a simple feeling. And, a, and simple feelings will ne neither lust nor promote the life change that God desires to see in us. Secondly, we must have the right spirit. This requires submission to the Lord God, since a rebellious spirit cannot praise God, we should repent daily of all known sin. This also involves laying aside negative attitude and critical comment towards others. Spirit means our praise can never be just another item on our to-do list. True worship is not an obligation, burden, or scheduling item but rather a total spiritual recognition of God's grace and love and kindness. Are you worshiping, beloved, the Lord in spirit and truth? Friends, are we the kind of worshiper God is seeking? God's people were made for praise. It is embedded in our spirit and something we cannot escape or ignore. The apostle Peter says it like this, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2, 9. It is a beautiful truth that we are God's own people, created chosen and called by him so that we may proclaim his excellencies that is our main responsibility and is our life is a life of praise to our heavenly loving father for a long time churches were so focused on evangelism and our create bible teaching that somehow and somewhere along the way the act of praise was given less and less room for expression in fact many people today never even miss it because they had never truly been exposed to it. However, the new worship that we see exploding around the world today is not really new at all. It is the sound of praise returning to the church. Does your worship, beloved, reflect genuine adoration and praise for God? Beloved, does your heart sing as you lift up your hands to heaven, giving glory to the Lord? Indeed, is worthy of your praise and my praise as well. We must also rid ourselves of fear. It is necessary to move beyond worrying about what others will think of us if we offer praise to God. The Lord delights in our praise, therefore pleasing Him must be our first priority. Uh, Psalm 48 verse 1 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Do you think, beloved, do you think of praising God only when things are going well or doing 
or during times of blessing. So many of us make this mistake. We must learn that praise is appropriate during bad times too. Thou art holy. O thou that inhibited the praises of Israel. Psalm 23 verse for Psalm 22 verse 3. Honestly, we will never know the true power of praise until we learn its value in our trials and our tribulations. There are many benefits of praising God during trying times. For example, praise focuses our attention upon God, causes us to recognize God's sovereignty and to recall the mighty acts of God. It paves the way for God to release His awesome power in our lives, enlarges our vision of God, and magnifies the presence of God. Further, it increases faith in God, fills our hearts with the joy of the Lord, unite the people of God, and exalt the name of God. When the circumstances in our lives seem insurmountable, we have a choice to make. We can either lead, dive into the depths of despair or look up and rejoice in the Lord. We can blame others and become angry at God or we can cry out to the one who is capable of turning our sorrows into joy. Praise God, not only for what he is planning for your future, but also for what you can learn from your present situation. Praise is a celebration of the Lord, but when we are in trouble, celebrating seems out of place. However, the life of faith is frequently contrary to typical human living. King Joseph had faced his difficulty by applauding God's past work and faithfulness and by recalling his promises. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 to 13. When we respond in similar ways, we too will be able to respond with courage. The natural human respond to trouble. Times is self-pity. At times we have self-pity party and also rehearsing the details and repercussions of our problem only makes it seem more threatening. Praise focuses our attention on God instead. If you are looking to him for aid, then we can help but recognize his sovereignty. Every trial that enters our lives comes through his permissive will, which means he has complete control. Whatever his reasons for allowing trouble into our lives, he is faithful to see us through it, recalling the Lord's mighty acts and focusing on his sovereignty in everyday life reminds of our dependent upon him. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 7 to 12. The king expected that God will have to intervene because recorded history shows he always acted to rescue his people. This recognition of Israel's helplessness is what unleashed God's full power. When believers try to solve problems independently of the Lord, he cannot work freely. Beloved, our praise is limited only by our knowledge. The more we read and study the Bible, the better we understand God's many attributes and assurances. Then, when difficulty comes, we can celebrate his past faithfulness to Christians while waiting his promised help. Consider your most recent prayer to the Lord. Did you spend as much time praising him as you did making requests? In our surface society today, especially our popular culture today, many people even attend church to get needs met. Singing helps emotions. Sermons feed the flock. And the color and then the queer entertains. Our own preferences can overshadow the primary purpose the Creator has for our lives to exalt Him. Beloved, praise both magnifies and pleases the Lord, but we actually benefit from the practice as well. First, adoration of God mod modifies our estimation of self. It's impossible to truly elevate God while sinking to pride, while clinging to pride. Instead, we come to recognize our sin, weakness, 
and dependence upon him. As scripture tells us, the Lord's power is manifest when we show genuine humility. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10. Next, praise appropriately humble us. It is a reminder of God's greatness and our dependence upon him. But at the same time, exalting him strengthens our sense of assurance, thereby increasing our faith then we are able to look beyond ourselves and our circumstances to see life from God's perspective. And consider one additional benefit of praise that involves our physical bodies. When we focus on Jesus' goodness, tension leaves and we find new strength. All these supernatural effects of exaltation are possible because will lift his name. God is present. As Psalm 22 verse 3 tells us that he habits, inhibits, inhabits the praise of his people. Think about the Lord's attributes and his work in your life. Beloved, when was the last time you truly offered an expression of uninhibited praise to God. Is something pre preventing you to praise God? Take a moment today to consider His goodness, His faithfulness, and His provision in your life and express it to Him through your love and gratitude in the method of your choice. Praise and adore Him because he only deserves it and show such a wonderful gratitude to him such a time like this. God bless you and thanks for listening. Bye for now.